Hello and welcome to Children's Study School Online. I'm Miss Rebecca and I thank you for taking the time to join me and to get into God's Word. It's the best way to begin your week. It's the best way to begin your day, to have a conversation, to have a discussion with God. Have you prayed to God today? Have you talked to God today? And Sundays are great because we have the opportunity to grab the Bible and to get into his word and to hear a really great Bible story and then to take that story, bring it to life and say, well, wait a minute, that's a really cool story, but what's Jesus saying to me today about this story? So last week we heard a story about how there were disciples. And the disciples had a lot of work to do. They went out and they preached and they teached and they taught everybody about Jesus and how to be like Jesus and how to follow Jesus, how to obey Jesus. And so more and more people came into the community. And then the disciples had lots of different jobs and tasks to do. And they became very overwhelmed. All of the things that they needed to do every day were wonderful things, but there was too much and they were not able to handle that workload. And so they decided to stop to pause and to ask for help. And so they choose seven people from the community, seven people that were honest, that um, were respected, that listened to, followed, and obeyed God. And they brought those seven people into the in, in, that were in the community and made them leaders. And so a lot of the tasks that the disciples were doing, they said, here, you can go ahead and do this for us. So that way the disciples could focus on preaching and teaching. And we talked about in order to have our faith in action challenge, how it is important for us that when we have a lot going on in our lives to stop, to pause, to ask for help. Or maybe we're doing really great, but we can see people around us in our world and maybe we can stop and we can help them and we can take some of their workload off of their shoulders. So our faith in action challenge was to ask for help and then to help other people. Did you do that this week? Did you practice that? That's what we learned about in our Bible story. And so when we learn different things that God is teaching us through the Bible, we want to apply them to our lives and to do them. Did you do these faith and action challenges? Did you stop, pause, ask for help? Did you look around you and see who you can help that they might be overworked and they might be exhausted? If you did not, continue to work on that. It's so important that we, that we not only hear the stories of the Bible, but that we live them out and that we share them with other people. Right now, we're going to go ahead and get ready to press pause, and we're going to go to our second device, and we're going to listen to our first worship song, and that is called Come to the Table by the Sidewalk Prophets. All of us are gifted with different tasks and different abilities and different talents. And when we bring all of those things together and we sit at a table together and we say, hey, you're good at this, I'm good at that, and we work together for God's purpose, we come to the table and help one another for God's purpose, that means that we are living how God wants us to live and taking him out into the world. So let's go ahead, go to our second device and listen to song number one, Come to the Table by the Sidewalk Prophets. This month, our focus word or our faith word is act in love. All month long, our stories are going to be about how we act in love, how the people in the Bible act in love by what they do, their actions, and how they show love to other people. It's really easy to say that I love everybody, but it's not as easy to stop what we're doing and to actually love people, to show them kindness. And some of the best ways that we can act in love is by smiling, giving a high five, giving a hug, listening to friends, picking up our toys, doing what's asked of us, and then to share Bible stories with others and to share God with others, to pray for others, to pray with others. Those are all ways that we can act in love. 
So we're gonna go ahead and get ready to press pause again and we're gonna listen to our second worship song which is Love One Another by the Newsboys. Now I know the kiddos that are doing in-person Sunday school right now, they love this song and they love this video. So if you've not stopped in the, in the flow of our um, children's Sunday school worship service to actually listen to the music, I do, I really wish that you would because music brings such an important element to our service together. So song number two, Love One Another by the newsboys. Our memory verse this month is out of the book of Romans, which is in the New Testament. It's Romans 12, um, chapter 12, verse 10a, and it says, love one another like the members of your family. So often, even when our own family members make us frustrated or overwhelmed, we are still able to love them because we say, well, of course we love them. They're our family. Well, we should love all people like they are our family because to God, we are all family, not just your brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles, grandmas, grandpas, cousins, but your neighbor, the, the person that you're driving down the street and you, and, and you see. All of those people are also your family because we are all children of God. And so it's really important to love one another and to treat others as we treat our family members. The book of the Bible that we are going to be in today is the book of Acts. So we're still in the Acts of the Apostles or the actions to see what the first church did and how they lived after Jesus ascended into heaven, how they came together, how they went out and did life. And so we are going to hear a great story about Peter and Tabitha. And we are going to be in the book of Acts. So again, we're in the New Testament. And it's going to start with the Gospels, four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, then John. Then the next book is the book called Acts. And so if you have a deep blue Bible, it's actually going to be the first tab. So the Apostles, so the Gospels are blue. And then if you look, Acts is this pink, this purple color. And so that's where we're at today. And we are going to be in chapter nine. So big number nine, and we're going to be in verses 36 through 43. It's not a very long passage, but it's a really, really important one. So again, we're going to be in Acts nine. Acts, see the big number nine. And then we're going to come back over here. And our story is actually in 36 through 43. And so we're going to go ahead and have Miss Sherry open up her deep blue Bible and read to us from the text today. Hi everybody. Welcome back to Sunday School. I'm Miss Sherry and I will be doing our Bible reading for today. If you'd like to follow along, I'm going to be using our deep blue Bible. Uh, you're welcome to follow along with me or you can just listen. Uh, we are going to be reading from the Acts of the Disciples chapter 9 verses 36 through 43. Let's get started. In Joppa, there was a disciple named Tabitha. In Greek, her name is Dorcas. Her life overflowed with good works and compassionate acts on behalf of those in need. About that time, though, she became so ill that she died. After they washed her body, they laid her in an upstairs room. Since Lydda was near Joppa, when the disciples heard that Peter was there, they sent two people to Peter. They urged, please come right away, when Peter went with them. Upon his arrival, he was taken to the upstairs room. All the widows stood beside him, crying as they showed the tunics and other clothing that Dorcas made while she was alive. Peter sent everyone out of the room, then knelt and prayed. He turned to the body and said, Tabitha, get up. She opened her eyes, saw Peter, and sat up. He gave her his hand and raised her up. Then he called God's holy people, including the widows, and presented her alive to them. The news spread throughout Joppa, and many put their faith in the Lord. Peter stayed for some time in Joppa with a certain tanner named Simon. What did you guys think of that story? Um, there are two things that really stand out to me when I think about this story. Um, I really love the way that the Bible describes Tabitha's life, 
how it overflowed with good works and compassionate acts on behalf of those in need. So what does that mean? It means that she helped the poor. It helped people who were less fortunate in their community. And I think that that's so important. That's something that Jesus definitely would have wanted. Jesus helped the poor. He loved others. Uh, and Tabitha was carrying on that good work. Um, the other part that I like, which is probably the most important part about this, um, this story and, and what we should learn from it, is that the good news spread throughout Joppa and many put their faith in the Lord. So after this miracle, it drew more people to learning about the Lord and to following Jesus. And that's really what we want. We want to be able to share the good news of the Bible and share the good news about Jesus with others so that they can know his love and go out and do good deeds as well. So think about this story. Think about what stood out to you or what you liked the best. And think about who you can tell to spread the love of Jesus and continue talking about um, his good works. Thank you, Ms. Sherry, for bringing us this amazing story from the Bible. Let's go ahead and go to God before we begin our message. Dear Lord, we thank you for the stories of the Bible. We thank you for Ms. Sherry for being with us every week and for reading them to us. We thank you for your word that we are able to grow closer with you and stay connected with you. Lord, allow us to hear whatever it is you want us to hear, and Lord, allow me to say whatever it is you want me to say. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, may it be found loving in your sight. Lord, you are our rock, and you are our redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay. So we have talked over and over and over again about how the fact that Jesus was born, Jesus lived this amazing life, Jesus died, three days later Jesus was resurrected, and then he hangs out on earth with his buddies for like 40 days, and then he meets him at the top of a mountain and he tells them, I want you to go out and to tell people, to preach to people, to teach people, to heal people, to tell them about me and my life and have them follow. And so that's what he said to the disciples, and then Jesus ascends into heaven, and that's where he's at right now, seated at the right hand of God. And so the disciples had a choice to make. They had the decision to say, okay, I'm in. I will totally accept Jesus' challenge, and I will do what he says, and I will go out and preach and teach and heal and tell everybody about Jesus. Or they had the choice to go back to their lives and do whatever. Well, and as we know, the 11 disciples that were on the mountain with Jesus, they accepted the challenge. And Peter, Peter was one of those people. In fact, Peter becomes the leader of the church, which I love because remember, Peter used to make a lot of mistakes. And throughout Peter's life as the, as the, as the church leader, he still makes a lot of mistakes, which is really helpful to me because I make a ton of mistakes. But in our story today, Peter does not make a mistake. In fact, what Peter does is absolutely amazing. So Peter has raised his hand and he said, yep, I'm gonna follow Jesus and I'm gonna do what he told me to do. I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna preach and I'm gonna teach and I'm gonna tell as many people about Jesus as I can. Now, a lot of times Peter would hang out in the town of Jerusalem. That's where he was kind of living. It was his home base. But this time the story talks about that Peter is not in Jerusalem. He's in a town called Lydda and he's there and he was called through a vision to say, hey, I want you to go to Lydda. So Peter's there doing his thing and then a group of people show up and they say to him, hey Peter, I need you to come to Joppa. We got something going on over here. I need your help. And so there again, Peter stops what he's doing and when he's called, he reacts and he goes. And he goes because he knows that God is pulling him to be in a different location to help somebody else in need. We've talked about having faith in action challenges, right? And do people know that we are followers of Jesus because of the things that we do, because of the actions that we do, the things we say, how we treat other people? Peter had amazing faith in action. In fact, I would say that everything that Peter did, people were able to see Jesus through him. In our story today, that is exactly what happens again. 
So like I said, Peter's in this town called Lydda, and before we know it, a group of disciples from the town of Joppa come and ask Peter to leave Lydda and to go to Joppa. Now, why did these disciples show up and ask him to go to this other town called Joppa? Well, there was this woman named Tabitha. Now, here is the coolest part that I love about this story. Oftentimes, when the Bible tells us about people or shares stories, we don't actually get to hear their name. And a lot of the times, they're just like a man or a woman. But in this story, this woman is named. Her name is Tabitha. And not only do we get to find out her name, the Bible goes on and explains about this woman. The Bible doesn't say, well, she was tall and had brown hair and blue eyes. No, the Bible doesn't care what we look like. The Bible goes on to say that Tabitha was a woman who was filled with good works. She was a woman that lived her life faithfully to God. She spent her life caring and loving other people. Typically, she really nurtured a community of women or widows, which are ladies that have lost their husbands. And so she came in and she helped take care of this community. She showed this community love. She showed this community kindness. She showed this com community um, compassion. And so this was her group of people that she took care of. How would, if somebody were to describe you, well, Sarah is this, Emma is like this, Zach is like this, how would they describe you? Would somebody look at you and say, oh, she's, she's faith-filled, she follows Jesus, he's super kind, he's super um, generous, he's super thoughtful, when I think of these kiddos, I think of Jesus because they act just like him. Is that how you are described? Or are you maybe described as, yeah, she's really cool, but she kind of, I don't know, she says some mean things sometimes. And sometimes she throws a temper tantrum when she doesn't get what she wants. And sometimes he doesn't always share his toys. And sometimes he gets really angry and is kind of says hurtful and mean things to me. How? would someone describe you and it matters how other people see us because we want people to see Jesus in us so if we have bad behavior or poor behavior then their focus is on the things that we're doing wrong and not Jesus so I love that this lady Tabitha is a given a name and B I love that the Bible says that she was filled with good works, that she helped people, and that she loved people. She had, she had actions in love. She acted in love. So in our story, this lady who does all of these great things for her community, she gets very sick and she dies. And the disciples hear that Peter is in a town close by and they say go over and get Peter and bring him to Tabitha. Now here's I'm gonna be honest this part kinda always makes my head spin and I start to think hmm I wonder I wonder why they went and got Peter the Bible does not tell us the Bible does not tell us that they wanted to go and get Peter because they thought Peter could heal her or bring her back to life. The Bible does not tell us if they went to go get Peter so he could come and, and, and help the community get through her death. The Bible does not tell us if they asked Peter to come to pray with the people or to perform her burial service. We don't know why Peter was called. All we know is, is that Tabitha, is loved in this community, she gets sick, and she dies. And the people say, go and get Peter. And Peter's hanging out in Lida doing his thing, and he hears, he hears the disciples say, we need you in Joppa. And Peter has a decision. He can say, no, I'm going to stay here and do this, or absolutely, I will come 
and I will be with you. And that is exactly what Peter does. Peter stops what he's doing. He sees that there's a need somewhere else and that is where he goes. So he goes to Joppa. Now we talked about this last week. We talked about when we feel overwhelmed and we have a lot going on in our heads, do we stop and ask somebody to help us? The people in Joppa stopped and they asked Peter to come and help them. And then we talked about maybe maybe you're not overwhelmed, but maybe maybe you are in a position to help somebody else. And that was Peter. Peter heard that there was a need and Peter made a choice to say, absolutely, I will come and I will help you. Are you doing those things in your life? It was your faith in action challenge last week and we're still talking about it. We talk about these things week after week after week because when Jesus teaches us something, he doesn't want us to do it once and say, oh, I did it, I'm good. No, he wants us to do it all the time. And so Peter goes to Joppa. And when Peter gets to Joppa, he sees all the people. All of the people that Tabitha helped on a regular basis were at her house. And they were sad. And they were crying. And they were mourning. And they were praying. And their hearts were broken because somebody that they loved desperately was no longer with them. And so Peter comes into the house and he goes to Tabitha's room and he asks everybody to leave the room. And Peter goes over to the bed by Tabitha and he kneels down. And then Peter prays to God. He comes in, he kneels down, and he talks to his Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And then he looks at Tabitha and he says, Tabitha, get up. And Tabitha's eyes open up. And Tabitha wakes and she sees Peter sitting there. And then Peter gives her his hand and he helps her up. And then Peter goes out and he calls all the people that are in her house and says, come and look. And they see that Tabitha, who was dead, is no longer dead. But she's right here and she's alive. And now this story of, of Peter bringing Tabitha back to life in the name of Jesus Christ happened. And so the story starts to go all around and saying, oh my goodness, look what Peter did. He called on God, he called on Jesus, and look at the miracle he was able to do because of his belief in Jesus. And people heard the story and they were like, oh, I wanna learn about Jesus, tell me about Jesus. And they believed in Jesus. And then they went to somebody else, what happened to Tabitha? Tell me the story. And they heard the story and they believed in Jesus. Wait a minute, wasn't she dead? She was dead and Peter came in. He knelt down, he prayed to God and then he said, Tabitha, get up. And he helped her up and she got up and they heard and they believed. And it kept going and going and going. And it went so far that it made it into this book. And now I'm saying to you, let me tell you this story. And now you're hearing the story. And now you have a responsibility to go and to share this story and to tell somebody else's story so they can hear, so they can listen, and so they can also believe. Now, oftentimes when we hear these stories, we say, okay, okay, th this, is a, this is a great story, Miss Rebecca. I really like it. It's super cool that Peter stopped what he was doing. He came into this town. He helped this awesome lady named Tabitha, and now she was alive again, and now she could be back into her community, and she can help, and that's all great. But um, can I tell you, Miss Rebecca, I have had somebody really special in my life. Maybe it was a grandma. Maybe it was a grandpa. Maybe it was a friend. Maybe it was an animal, and they got really sick and they died and they didn't get to come back. 
So this is a really nice story and I'm really happy for Tabitha and her friends, but I'm still really sad because I don't get to have my special person back in my life. And you know, I, I hear that. I actually, um, just this week, my, my dearest um, Aunt Pat, it's Mr. Jason's um, aunt, but she's my aunt. When I married Mr. Jason, I was given this gift of having this amazing lady in my life, Pat, and she passed away, and it was really hard this week. She had been really sick. She had been really sick, and it was a blessing that now she's with Jesus. But as I was doing this story, I thought, why couldn't Peter come and heal my Aunt Pat? And so, so, so what, do we, what do we do with those feelings? We can't take those feelings and say, oh, well, Jesus doesn't want to help me like he helped Tabitha. No, that is, that is not the case at all. And when I look at the story, I stop and I think to myself, no, I did not have the power to look at my Aunt Pat and say, get up. I did not have the power to take the pain when my aunt was so sick and to take that away from her. I couldn't do that. But you know what I did have the power to do? I had the power to send her cards. I had the power to send her texts. I had the power to make phone calls with her and have conversations with her and visit her. I had the power to make her smile. I had the power to sit on the phone and share the stories of Jesus with her and have her share her favorite stories from this book with me. We, we do not have the power to heal people. We do not have the power to bring people back to life. But God has given us a very different and a very important power. God has given us the power to, when somebody calls us and asks us for help, like Peter, to go and to help. God gives us the power to be like Tabitha and to share kindness and to share compassion and to share love with others. That is an amazing power. And we have that power and we have that ability because of Jesus and Jesus' love. So even when we are sad and we're overwhelmed with our own thoughts and why didn't this person get better and why didn't this happen? We have the power to go to God in prayer and say, help me understand and help me to love others, to act in love. So when people see me, they actually see Jesus. This is a beautiful story of power, of friendship, of helping, of showing up, of showing love and of showing kindness and sharing Jesus. All right, let's go ahead and celebrate wonder. Greetings, I'm Carly. In today's Bible story, we meet a woman named Tabitha. Tabitha was known for being really kind and for showing love to all those around her. Her life was filled with serving others and making sure that her community had all that they needed. She reminds me of my next door neighbor. My neighbor is amazing. She always helps anyone whenever they need it. She bakes bread for people, lets people stay over at her house, and she always says nice things to everyone she meets. The whole community loves her so much because of the way that she loves everyone around her. I bet Tabitha's community loved her like that too because she helped everyone in need. But something really sad happened to Tabitha. She got really sick and she died. The community was really, really sad. They loved her. They did everything that they could for her. Some people heard that Tabitha's friend, Peter, was nearby, so they went to get him. They didn't know what he could do, but they wanted to make sure that they tried everything. Her community wanted to care for her just like she cared for them. When Peter hears about Tabitha, he comes immediately. Together, they share memories of Tabitha and how she served her community. After that, Peter speaks to Tabitha and a miracle happens. She gets up. Wow! 
This is amazing, and it all started with love. Tabitha loved her community, and the community loved her during a really hard situation. And because Peter loved Tabitha and the community, he came to see how he could help. In this case, a miracle happened, but the biggest miracle of all was the love shared in the community. Tabitha is remembered as someone who loved and served others. Each of us can do the same. Now, it's time for you to wonder. So this week, what is your faith in action challenge? First, be like Tabitha. Be a Tabitha. Be somebody that when they look at you or when they talk about you that they say, oh, that person is filled with good works. They do good things for other people. They help other people. They speak nicely to other people. They show kindness to other people. They show love to other people. Faith in action challenge, be like Tabitha. Second, be like Peter. When somebody calls you and asks for help, show up. Help somebody by sitting with them, by talking with them, by listening to them, by smiling at them, by hugging them, by high-fiving them. Show up and be present in somebody else's life because we all need friends. We all need people to come alongside us and help us get us through the day because life is challenging. We have a lot going on. And we need to call out to friends and we need to show up and help our friends get through their day. Faith in action challenge. Be like Tabitha and be like Peter. And both of these two people, they knew the love of Jesus and they went out and they shared it with as many people as they could. Who are you going to share this story with? Sharing a story from the Bible is great power. I don't care if you're in preschool. I don't care if you're in third grade, fifth grade, or you are a parent. You have been given power by God to go out and to be his hands and feet into this world. That is a great power. And it's so important that you do that. And that so when people see you, they see Jesus. And that you act in love. Sometimes we're not always sure what we're supposed to do and how we're supposed to do it. And one of the best ways I think to do that is to have a conversation with God, is to be in prayer with God, is to talk to and with God all of the time. All right, so let's go ahead and have Miss Sherry pray for us. And now let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for the Bible. Thank you for continuing to share your stories with us so that we can draw others closer to you and help us to remember that we can always be just like Peter where we can kneel down and pray and feel close to you no matter what's going on in our lives. Um, thank you for all that you do for us, Lord, and for helping us to stay connected to you. Amen. All right, friends, so we need to finish up our worship service with our last two songs. Again, I find music to be a very important part of worship. Listen to the songs over and over and over again. I think they're great music. If you have any suggestions of songs that you would like to hear, send me a message, and I'd be glad to uh, put them in our rotation. So song number three is Love Like Jesus by the Rhett Walker Band. And song number four is Love by We Are Messengers. I know that um, these are some of my favorites, so I hope you enjoy them also. And of course, it's all about love because all month long, actually in all of our lives, we have the power to act in love every single day of our lives. Every single day in our lives. All right, everybody, have a great week, and I'll talk to you later. Bye. <laughs>